The Flag Protest of Honeheke, July 1844. People who were involved in this historical event are Honeheke, Napuhi leader and the first rangatira to sign Te Treaty o Watangi, widely recognised for his passion for protecting his people. Teruki Kawiti was known as a fierce warrior but also a peacemaker. He worked alongside Honeheke through the protests and wars. Robert Fitzroy became the New Zealand Governor in 1843. George Grey then became Governor in 1845. Come to help after all! You are committing a terrible crime! Honeheke donated a flagpole to the British Crown to represent the new United Tribes. The flagpole was placed in Waitangi, where Te Tiriti or Waitangi was signed. The British later removed the flagpole from Waitangi, placed it at Kororeka and replaced the United Tribes flag with the Union Jack. The British Crown removed the flag in order to take ownership of the land and country. This caused Honeheke to start his protest by chopping down the flagpole. This was caused by unfulfilled promises and colonisation that was occurring. Honeheke cut the flagpole three times before 1845. Fourth time of cutting the flagpole, war broke down between Māori tribes and British. With this, British Governor Fitzroy posted $100 for the arrest of Honeheke. A troop of soldiers were deployed to the Bay of Islands in order to retrieve Honeheke. The troops attacked a pa that was based at Lake Umapere. However, their attack was unsuccessful, leaving the troops defeated and 40 of the soldiers wounded or dead. The goal was to protest against the Crown's unlawful actions that were made towards Māori. In 1848, Honeheke and George Grey met to discuss the matter. An, an uneasy peace between the British and Māori was reached as a result of this discussion and the flagstaff remained fallen to prevent further conflict. Impact of the language, culture and identity of those concerned. The actions of Honeheke were implemented because his and his people's culture, language and identity were being disrespected and shoved into a corner. The Māori culture and language would be demolished and English would become the prominent language. Māori language, culture and identity began fading out as the British took over. However, Honeheke found this as an opportunity to stand up for his people and culture through partaking in the protest and flagstaff felling. Their identity was not being enhanced, therefore affecting their mana and ways of doing and living. How did Te Tiriti o Watangi get dishonoured? On the one hand, Māori expectations of partnership. On the other hand, Crown assumptions of unbridled sovereignty. This concerns Te Tiriti o Waitangi because of the different understandings Māori and the British had in regard to the treaty. Māori was told that their land will be protected and that British and Māori will live together as one, upholding the agreement of participation, protection and partnership. This soon changed when the British made the decision to violate these three promises that were made within the treaty. Māori were no longer able to charge anchorage fees, they couldn't even mill their own kauri. And for Māori it was the beginning of an economic decline that's still been felt to this very day.